Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, 2022 commando session that will uh, address blue skills and careers for the European Green Deal. We will, I apologize for the for the delay, in particular for those that are connected on uh, the web stream. Um, today we will discuss with the invited speakers ongoing activities, in, the, in particular the ones carried out by the funded projects that are aiming at developing next generation of blue skills and that providing opportunities for attractive, sustainable maritime careers. As it is an hybrid event, uh, let me thank for joining us today, both the ones of you who are present here in Rimini and the ones that are following remotely. Uh, I hope that uh, this hybrid setup will um, allow more people to attend the meeting and interact with uh, our speakers. I would like also to remind you that you can ask uh, at any time question via Slido, uh, things that is not, uh, I, can you show the, the Slido? Uh, is also in, uh, in my presentation. Huh? Yeah, if you go to the second one, anyway, it will be visible. Um, voilà. Thank you. So as you can see in the slide, uh, um, you can connect to the website, Slido, using your mobile or PC and join the event following the using the QR code or the, the title of the event. So in this way, you will be able to ask questions to us during the whole event. Um, of course, we will also give a chance to the uh, participant in, in the room to take the floor and, and, and assess them directly to the speakers. But uh, mm, just can, sorry, get back. Uh, let me uh, introduce myself. Uh, I'm Luca Marangoni, the head of unit for uh, Sustainable Blue Economy at CINEA, the executive agency of the European Union dealing uh, with the implementation of the Green Deal. And uh, together with uh, the Italian Minister of Education, and unfortunately is not present today, then the Minister of uh, uh, for Ecological Transition, represented by, by Sibia Grandi, my, my co chair, sitting on, on my left side, um, will, uh, let's say, will offer you the opportunity to uh, discover a bit more about uh, a new uh, call that has been just uh, launched. Uh, last month on blue careers, but also on, uh, on different uh, experiences, projects that have been developed. In particular, uh, this is the case for, for a couple of uh, um, EMFF, European Maritime Fisheries Fund uh, project that have been uh, implemented in the last year and are being also dis being discussed during the final session uh, later, so project assets and, and teams. Um, in designing this workshop with the colleagues from the Italian ministries, we we were looking in particular, um, if you want to uh, say um, how we can really support the development of, of blue career in, uh, in Europe, and uh, um, how we could learn from the experience that we have, uh, say, developed uh, different uh, setups, situation, uh, regions, but also through different uh, instruments. So is, is why actually the we um, want we here today at the table there are also uh, colleagues from uh, JRC, uh, but also from from other stakeholders that uh, can really uh, bring you some some news some some insight on how they they have uh, developed their their particular their schemes uh, and, and uh, also careers. Um, I would stop here. I think that uh, uh, it's quite enough for an introduction. Um, again, I, I will leave the floor to you later, or do you want uh, to welcome? I people? just can say welcome everybody, and uh, let's go for for their session. Then I will take back the floor. Thank you. So I'm Silvia Grandi, Director General of Circular Economy, and also dealing with the the National Sustainable Development Strategy. That's I'm very happy here to be here. Please. I'll give you back the floor. Thank you very much, Silvia. Uh, so let's go quickly uh, to my presentation on uh, on the on the new call, Blue Careers for Sustainable Economy. This is a call uh, worth 7.5 million euro and was published on the 13th of uh, October. I will provide you some insight uh, on it. Uh, Before uh, uh, presenting the call, perhaps it's useful that I recall you, at least I give you a background. Uh, because this is the third edition of Blue Carry Calls. We, we had uh, two editions in the past years. 
plus a specific call uh, targeting the Mediterranean region, um, more on networking for, for blue skills among different stakeholders. In total, uh, 11 million euro from uh, your budget were mobilized and uh, 18 projects funded. They were focusing on several aspects covering different sectors, so shipping, logistics, fishing, aquaculture, biotechnology, maritime special planning, tourism. If you want addressing vocational uh, training, higher education, um, but also looking aspect of innovation and in particular on the interaction, the, the, the cooperation between uh, academy and also for us, it was an interesting experience because uh, uh, we had several results and uh, um, we actually built up the new call on the lesson that we learned from, from those calls in the past. The new call, as I said, is looking on uh, on aspect of that were relevant also in the past, in particular, uh, the lack of of uh, skills ecosystem as a basic level was already treated by the second call. Um, the lack of training certification qualification recognition processes is still relevant. Uh, despite all the effort made in the last years, uh, is, is still a, an important lack in the sector. Um, as I said before, we were also looking into, uh, let's say, structured collaboration between industry and educational, uh, VAT institution also aligning with ongoing technology, technological developments in the different blue economy sectors. What is in a way new uh, is actually the first bullet point. So the lack of digital green, soft, transversal, and soft skill. I mean, soft skill were already covered, but the focus that we have in the new call on digital and, and green skills uh, is, is very pr prominent. And uh, you'll see also in, in other slides. And um, in particular, this is also why we have been yeah, from, from JSC to talk about the, the King Comp developed by the JSC in the last years. The objectives of the new call are uh, quite straightforward. As I say, promotion of green digital blue skill is clearly uh, coming from, from the lack that I, I mentioned in the last slide. Reskilling upskilling up schemes and cooperation between education industries and uh, blue career awareness and attractiveness for students and young professionals. Those are supposed in a way to be addressed uh, uh, directly um, under five themes or priorities that have been identified for this call. The five themes uh, are uh, in a way compulsory in, in the way that uh, uh, whatever proposal is prepared and submitted under this, uh, this call to at least focus on one of those teams. Uh, is it possible to combine them? Um, so in a way, it's also possible to go beyond what is written uh, the call in terms of the teams and priorities, but it's very important that uh, a proposal is focusing on one of those. And uh, of course, the activities to be developed are listed uh, as inspiration in the, in the call for proposal. We have a, a, a summary on the right of the slide, uh, but are not uh, in a way compulsory or uh, all of them at least not compulsory or uh, uh, limiting the preparation of the proposal. You can always go beyond uh, what is suggested. So in a way, uh, while looking on developed innovative educational material, uh, you can of course uh, work on integrating innovative um, training models in educational programs, but you can also propose something else and uh, go beyond. Uh, develop and pilot innovative teaching and training approaches. We are focusing on combination of training means for skills development at various levels, so covering also different sectors uh, from traditional and emerging sector of the economy. There is a full list in the in the corporate proposal, um, but again, it's not exhaustive. So, in a way, uh, this is a call for proposal which is bottom up. Of course, there is a strong focus on skills. But uh, the idea is that the idea, the innovation should come really from, from the stakeholders, from those that are teaming up in a consortium for, for applying speaking for this funding. The third uh, teams that have structured collaboration frameworks between blue industry, industry sector, education, VAT providers, we already mentioned it. 
uh, I am not going to spend too much time, but uh, if you want, uh, in terms of activities, we can focus more on operational links, uh, any particular apprenticeships, job showing scheme, uh, for up and reskilling, career guidance, so very open. The last two, uh, pool and share of resources, proposed test and pilot mutual recognition schemes. Uh, as you see, there are some suggestions. Uh, it may be also worth to, to remember that uh, uh, under the activities, the solution proposed, uh, you can also have a strong focus on uh, uh, talent retention and awareness raising campaigns uh, for up healing. As I say, the, te the teams, the priorities are in a way compulsory, by meaning that at least one has to be chosen, but for the rest, then in terms of activities, there is full space for, let's say, creativity. Expected impact, as usual, uh, we have also proposed several impacts. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, there are a few indicators that are compulsory because they are related to uh, monitoring uh, and evaluation needs uh, for the European Maritime uh, Risk Architecture Fund. Uh, but uh, what is important that uh, the results that you propose and your proposal are, are let's say, relevant uh, and, and significant for, uh, for the activities and objectives. To go more in, in detail on uh, some tips and uh, in the key information for preparing a, a proposal and applying to, to this group of proposal. Um, this is for consortium. It means that uh, it's not for individual applicant. It is extremely important to have a, a strong consortium, uh, at least of three applicants from two, from two different uh, countries, new member states. The coordinator must be established in a, in a new member state, but then I will also give you more information on geographical scope. Um, how much can you get? The, the co-funding rate is quite high, 80%. It is why it is, a, let's say, um, consider a complex uh, cooperation uh, action. So uh, it is why, I mean, putting together uh, stakeholders from, from different sector uh, level, um, institutional level as well, and, uh, and, and countries, uh, require usually a, a, a big effort, so justify this kind of uh, intensity rates. The size of the of the investment, say project, is between 800 and 1.2 million euro. It is again our estimation, a suggestion. Uh, if you need more or less, uh, you can always uh, make a proposal with a bigger or, or smaller uh, amount. And as I said. What are we looking for? Innovative cooperation projects, bringing together industry representatives and training orientation. I will repeat some of the main, some of the mantra of, uh, of this call. Uh, I hope it will not be too, too much boring, but for those applying, it's very important to understand those aspects. Uh, so I already mentioned this. Uh, um, main aspect on, uh, on this slide. Yeah, it was fully covered by the previous one. So, as I said, geographic location. Um, the proposals are related to activities taking place in the EU territory and water. So this means basically North Sea, Baltic Sea, Black Sea, the Atlantic and the Mediterranean Sea, in particular the, the area of the West Met uh, Initiative and the, the Adriatic Ionian Sea for referring to the EU macro regional strategy. And also on the EU outermost region. There is a particular focus on the outermost regions um, because we know that there is a need, uh, they, 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 um, I mean, it, it would be very, very useful to have consortium that are also involved in some stakeholder from the outermost region also to, let's say, help them to, dis to develop blue skills because basically they don't have a, a, a very uh, say, sufficient critical mass uh, in their territory sometimes. Um, is not an obligation, of course, it's something that is going to be rewarded during the evaluation process. And non-new countries, it's important to know that uh, um, partner from uh, um, the countries that are listed here are uh, eligible if they are necessary. I mean, in, in a way, they, they really are uh, instrumental to the implementation of the project. They are actually the partner countries of uh, uh, CBS in a macro regional strategy. So it means uh, uh, Mauritania, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, from, and Libya from the West Med, 
Moldova, Ukraine, Georgia, and Turkey for, for the Black Sea, and Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the Negro, North Macedonia, and Serbia for uh, the USA, Adriatic Union. Uh, Libya is, is uh, I mean, it is eligible, but as you know, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not possible to work in a country can, currently. But what can be done is actually to, uh, for example, train some, uh, some student from, from, from this country. Possible to have some some schemes where they are involved, they can receive some some service and benefit. Uh, of course, even if Russia is part of the Black Sea, is excluded from from the scope current situation. Sorry, Why is it not? very quickly selection criteria. Always remember financial capacity, operational capacity is important that uh, the consortium can uh, can demonstrate that they have stable and sufficient financial resources and at the same time also the, the staff allow the qualification uh, to, to perform uh, the action. The evaluation process is as usual. We have three basic, basic standard uh, criteria, relevance, quality and impact. Uh, referring, for example, to the outermost region participation, this will be assessed and rewarded under the, the quality criteria. I'm not spending too much time on the on, on the award and selection because it's something that will be also presented uh, more extensively. I, I, will, I will tell you when, when and, and how you can get this information. So just a recap, a quick recap, clearly indicating a proposal chosen teams and priority, design of proposed action with industry representatives, no way to get this fund without having an industry, at least a private entity in the, in the consortium. Develop regional partnership, consider skill needs of CBESIM. Uh, it is quite important that uh, you have also, I mean, you take into consideration as much as possible the, the CBESIM dimension. Of course, cooperation across CBESIM is possible and, and also in, in sub region. The development of multidisciplinary approaches, take all of the two economic sector possible, and we mentioned the pattern across different basin and autonomous. Quickly, to information. On the 24th of November, uh, we have an info day in Brussels, it's hybrid. We will provide much more information on this corporate proposal. And uh, mm, yeah, you can still register, come, or and we follow uh, web stream. Mm, but it's anyway, it's important to register, also to have access to the web stream. Mm, the deadline for submission, uh, 31st of January. Uh, so there is still quite a lot of time to prepare the, the proposals. Um, we will run the evaluation between February and, and uh, April, and we expect to have a final agreement for ranking, uh, ranking list between uh, April and May. So basically the information on the successful and successful applicants will be uh, sent out in uh, in May, and we will complete the grant agreement to so sign the contract with uh, with the successful uh, applicants uh, during summer, at the latest by September October. Few links uh, I will try perhaps to to make available the presentation to everybody so you can follow the links. There is also a link for another call for proposal uh, that will be presented in for the on the twenty fourth of November. The um, Regional flagship uh, for uh, sustainable economy at, at the UC Basin. And uh, anyway, it, the focus is different, maybe interesting for some of you, just uh, providing the link there. Remember always, if you have questions, go on our portal. It's always better to uh, introduce a, a written question to the, the email box that I've uh, I provided there. Um, because in this way, you will get also a, a formal reply from our side or so something legally binding also for us, and it will be shared with, with everybody. Anyway, if you want also to have a meeting with, uh, with staff, have a, a direct discussion, get more information, you can always come to, to Brussels for the info day because there will be also more staff available for B2B meeting. Some link, I stop here. I think taking a lot of time and uh, thank you very much. Unless there are burning questions, I would move to the following presentation and anyway, we will have, uh, uh, we'll have a bit of time for, for question uh, at the end of the, of the presentation. So 
here if you want to take the floor and so Bianchi is a, is a researcher at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission as a PhD in sustainable management. And at the moment, uh, she's involved in the pilot project partnership for regional innovation. Always at the JRC, she has developed the European Sustainability Competence Framework for lifelong learning, Green Comp. That is now available also in Italian. And uh, I don't know if there are copies available uh, outside. No, okay, fine. <laughs> but then it, she will now present uh, uh, the Green Comp. Many thanks, the floor is yours. Yeah, please. Thank you, Luca, for the nice presentation. Thank you, Silvia, for, for hosting me on behalf of the JRC. So indeed, we decided not to print any copies, so feel free to download the report, but only if you're planning to read it. Um, so I'm here uh, from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. It's basically a research institute inside the European Commission, and we provide research for, for policies. So indeed, today I will present GreenComp. There is a European Sustainability Competence Framework for Lifelong Learning. It's working. Um, so indeed, um, very briefly, a bit of policy context. Uh, so the, um, the development of a sustainability competence framework was called for in the European Green Deal that, as you know, is the flagship of the van der Leyen Commission. And the same is true for the uh, European Skills Agenda and the European Education Area. Also, the biodiversity strategy back in the days called for the need uh, of uh, developing and implementing learning for environmental sustainability. So GreenComp is part of a bigger picture of uh, initiative that indeed the European Commission is doing for uh, learning for sustainability. Indeed, this year was the year of youth. Next year is going to be the year of, uh, of European skills. And uh, GreenComp was already part of the proposal for a council recommendation on learning for environmental sustainability that was eventually adopted in June with a change of title. Uh, that is indeed learning for sustainable development. Another action that is uh, ongoing is the Education for Climate Coalition, where students, teachers, educators, trainers, uh, let's say, join up forces and advertise the challenge uh, that they're doing in schools, for example, to implement green comb, to implement uh, um, environmentally friendly activities to really uh, learn for the, for the environment, for the planet. So why Green Comp? Uh, but first, me, let me say that uh, Green Comp uh, is a name that made uh, onomath onomatopoeutic sense. Uh, we are not, I'm not particularly fond of it because it implies that it's only environment, but it's actually beyond that. However, if you think about it, SUSCOMP was not uh, as appealing. Uh, somebody suggested GAIACOMP, so I was like in favor of GUIACOMP, but that didn't fly. So we have now green comp, but it's beyond uh, the environment. So indeed, uh, at the Joint Research Center, we have developed already uh, some, uh, some other comps. Uh, that doesn't imply that, um, you know, if you have the digital competencies, you cannot go for the environmental competencies. It's just a different lens of looking at education programs. And this is specifically on sustainability. So indeed, uh, that was planned to be the last slide, but it's such an exciting news that I decided to put it up front. GreenComp is now translated in all EU languages, and it's available um, again at the same link. And in Italian, just because of the context, is called Quadro Europeo delle Competenze in Materia di Sostenibilità. So the objective by then was really to identify for the first time on a European level a set of knowledge, skills, and attitudes uh, that learners should develop in order to think, plan, and act with respect, uh, with uh, responsibility, with care, with empathy for the planet, but also for society. Because as you know, the two are extremely linked. So um, why do I say knowledge, skill? skills and attitudes, because again, at the European level, we define a competence as a set of knowledge, that is what you know, skills, that is what you can do based on what you know, and attitudes, that is basically how you intend to behave on that. So indeed, uh, we, we heard Luca talking about the lack of green skills, but also 
the objective and the expected outcome of the call to really develop comp content and uh, indeed uh, train on green skills. And what I'm telling you here is that uh, you can already start uh, with taking a look, but hopefully, you know, building on uh, what we have done with green comp. Why am I saying this? Because green, uh, mm, behind green comp, there is a lot of work. So we started in 2020 with a literature review of uh, basically the aim was to identify whether um, there was a consensus, whether green comp was needed, because obviously if there was already something out there like green comp, we wouldn't have uh, spent so much time and energies on that. Uh, yeah, what we found was that there, there was a consensus over sustainability competencies, mind you, not over green skills, um, and there is a report on that. But that was basically at the higher education level and uh, from the US, I mean, from US um, institutions. So what we did was to come up with a proposal of sustainability com of a sustainability competence framework. And we discussed this, that extensively with uh, experts from all over the world, which were kind enough not to destroy it completely, but no, I mean, it was composed of four competence areas. One of that, that was basically um, more on problem solving was changed towards more action oriented competencies. We'll see that in a second, but basically what they were arguing is that you cannot really solve a wicked problem such as the sustainability problems. Um, so then eventually uh, we came up with the final proposal that was fully agreed, taken on board, and we published it in January. So here you can see uh, the 12 competencies of GreenComp. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them now by reading my, them out loud because in a second we are gonna see them uh, briefly, I promise. And what we have here, it's also in the next slide, but in Italian because of the translated version. However, I understand that the audience is mainly English speaking, so um, I'll go uh, further. So the ingredients of the framework um, are basically, we have four competence areas. Each competence area has three competencies and each competence in jargon is called a descriptor, but it's basically its definition. So we have 12. And then each competence is defined by five knowledge, five skills, and five attitudes statements, approximately. So we have 180 statements uh, to help you understand what we mean by system thinking, what we mean by exploratory thinking. And... Mm -mm. In the next slide, you can see an example of that. Maybe, yes. Um, yeah, so um, we have, for example, no. Working? Sorry, stop working. Um, okay. Uh, so this is not cooperating. Maybe I touched something. Oh. Well, anyway. Um... Yeah, prova a fare esco. Like it's not uh, cooperating. This was all planned, by the way. It's just for you to take a break. Thanks. Yes. Perfect. Uh, so sorry about the introduction. So indeed, we have uh, one competence area that is embodying sustainability values. Then one competence of that area is valuing sustainability with its definition. And then the statements that you cannot read here, but basically what they do is to define what we mean by value and sustainability. Again, here you see numbers. So for example, one and 1.1, 1 
The numbers are just for simplicity. What we say is that these competencies are interrelated, equally important, so we just put them there for ease of reference. This is a metaphor for GreenCom to really help explain what we mean with GreenCom, but also because of the importance of the pollinators for both for the planet and society. So it was uh, quite agreed that that was a nice metaphor for GreenCom. And these are the competence areas that I'm going to briefly e explain. So, uh, for example, uh, we have embodying sustainability values uh, with uh, valuing sustainability, supporting fairness and promoting nature. So indeed, with these competence areas and these competencies, what we mean is not that you should learn specific values. What we want learners to understand is that values are constructs and you can choose or not, you individuals, organizations, organizations trainers, uh, professors, consumers, can choose whether or not to support those for sustainability, such as like intergenerational and intergenerational equity and justice, and indeed uh, respect for the planet. We then have embracing, for, embracing complexity in sustainability with system thinking, critical thinking, and problem framing. Here, the idea is really to understand that you need to look at the whole picture and you cannot really take parts um, individually and expect that when you put them back together, um, you will have um, you know, a full cake. Um, critical thinking, we all know it, and then problem framing, indeed, uh, it's about understanding the problem at hand, the challenges, the opportunities, identify the stakeholders involved, and then work backwards from the goal to the problem. Envisioning sustainable futures is about looking for, I mean, stop looking for certainties, but rather start thinking about possibilities, thinking of the future as a plural. Uh, indeed, we have desired futures, we have expected, probable, possibles. It's about understanding what actions we need to take today in order not to, um, or in order to achieve the desired future. Adaptability, uh, it's about indeed being flexible enough with trade-offs mm -hmm. of sustainability and exploratory thinking, it's about creativity and a transdisciplinary approach that is needed uh, for a circular economy and society. Finally, acting for sustainability, that was indeed uh, quite um, argued uh, for by the experts, uh, involve political agency, collective action and individual initiative. What we want to say here is that we don't expect all individuals to act at the same level. We need to take into consideration um, each and everyone's background. So to act on the extent that is possible. So wrapping up, uh, competencies, as I said, are very much interrelated. You cannot um, have system thinking without promoting nature, for example, if you want to think about sustainability and if you want to act on it. And um, uh, for example, in the use cases in the appendix, we show how these 12 competencies are indeed interrelated. The way forward. So right now, GreenComp is a conceptual model. We have witnessed some schools, uh, uh, universities that are already implementing GreenComp in their programs. Again, these are competencies, so it's not uh, content related. It's just about you know developing a kind of mindset for sustainability. Um, and uh, indeed, uh, right now, it's also part of the call. So what we expect to do in the future is to progress with the assessment methods, but also to collect, um, to collect experiences at the European level uh, in order to, to, to exchange good practices on this. And with this, I close. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dia. Now uh, let's move to, to Flavia Rolli, um, who works for the National Institute of Oceanography and Applied Geophysics (OGS) in the structure of uh, international cooperation and research promotion. Uh, Flavia coordinates capacity building activities in the field of sustainable economy. She is responsible for the organization of the Advanced Master in Sustainable Economy and the Summer School. Two activities are part of the Blue Skills Initiative 
implemented by OGS on behalf of the Italian Ministry of University and Research within the framework of the Western Mediterranean Forum. So, Flavia, the floor is yours. Okay. In the meantime, um, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm representing uh, the Director of International Cooperation, Dr. Munir Gribi, who was not able to be here today due to another work commitment. Um, so today I will present uh, the Blue Skills Initiative, uh, which is an initiative uh, implemented by uh, OGS um, on behalf uh, of the Ministry of University and the Research within the framework uh, of the Western Mediterranean uh, Dialogue. The five plus five dialogue. Okay, just a second. It's not uh, curvy. Uh, sorry about this issue. I don't know, maybe from the uh, otherwise I go on without the presentation, but uh, maybe just let's wait for a few seconds. Okay. Sorry about this issue. Uh, so I was saying that uh, I will present the Blue Skills Initiative, which won uh, the uh, Western uh, West Med Project Award in 2021. Um, just to give you a short overview about the project. So the project uh, involved uh, members and partners from the countries of the five plus five dialogue, um, but it benefits the countries of all the Mediterranean. Um, the budget was one, one million euros and it, it has been lasting for five years. It will finish in 2023. Um, the, the project and the initiative was possible thanks to the support, the financial support of the um, Ministry of University and Research. Um, the Blue Skies Initiative is uh, the Italian uh, contribution to the 5 plus 5 dialogue, and OGS has an uh, important uh, role uh, in this um, forum because it hosts the, the Secretariat also. Uh, the Blue Skills uh, uh, received a number of recognition. I already mentioned the award uh, that it won in 2021, but in 2019 it was also labeled by the Union for the, Me for, for the Mediterranean because it contributes to the objectives of the ministerial declarations, uh, including the ministerial declaration on blue economy of 2021. The reason why we uh, implemented this uh, initiative uh, is um, because we wanted to uh, address some issues uh, and we wanted to promote uh, uh, the skills that are needed for um, talents uh, to operate in the marine and maritime sectors. We know that the sustainable blue economy has um, 
many sectors and we need to create uh, um, blue careers, so this new profile. Um, we know that the Mediterranean is a sea of opportunities, so we have, uh, um, we know that 30% of trade and transport of oil and gas goes through the Mediterranean and 20% of global maritime transport goes through the Mediterranean and 10% of global GDP is generated in the Mediterranean, but we have issues. So we know that uh, yeah, we have a, new, a high youth unemployment rate. And the main issue is uh, the mismatch between uh, um, the training offer and the market needs. We see this also in the, um, in the emerging sectors, for example, offshore uh, renewable energy, but we also see it in maritime transport where digital skills uh, and green skills become more and more needed. Um, but as I said, the blue economy is uh, very uh, wide. And so we need to really focus on uh, um, a multidisciplinary expertise. That's why in our training path, we um, really want to uh, promote this multidisciplinary training. And our training path uh, is organized in capacity building, uh, in circular mobility, um, in raising awareness on the blue careers, and on uh, communication. So we really invest also in, in communication. Uh, let me start by presenting the Advanced Master in Sustainable Blue Economy, which is a one-year master or co-organized by the University of Trieste and OGS. The master is entirely taught in English, and uh, um, it's uh, very multidisciplinary, including uh, topics such as oceanography, but also uh, environmental engineering, uh, but also policies as well. Uh, it's organized in Trieste. Uh, during COVID, we organized it online. Uh, now we are at our sixth edition. In the previous editions, uh, uh, we had uh, already at least uh, 100 participants. Um, from many nationalities, uh, of course, uh, especially from the Mediterranean, but not only. Um, and we have a strong women participation. 65% uh, of uh, our students come from developing countries, and the most of them come from the 5 plus 5 uh, dialogue countries. Uh, we really focus on employability. So, um, considering uh, the results, uh, uh, we see that uh, this master really helps uh, students to really uh, continue their career and to boost their career in sustainable blue economy and in the maritime maritime sectors. And for us, it's very important to build on the community. So our uh, former students uh, uh, come together once a year uh, to share experience and to support uh, each other and to give ideas to, to one another. Applications are open every August, uh, so now we are selecting the participants that applied to this year. Let me move on, so um, I will present shortly now another initiative, the Summer School. The Summer School has been organized by OGS since 2014, and it's addressed to um, postgraduate students uh, in the field of uh, the blue economy, all fields. Uh, we have received uh, many applications in the past year. We have trained more than 300 uh, participants by now, and the summer school is fully funded. In, uh, because of COVID uh, in 2021, we had to continue online, but in 2022, we came back in, present, uh, in presence, and the summer school focused on uh, uh, the Copernicus Maritime Services uh, as a tool to boost the sustainable blue economy with the support of the Copernicus Academy. Let me now uh, just uh, focus on one last point. Uh, so mobility and uh, training, um, thanks to the Deep Blue project. This project was implemented by OGS um, with the, the support of uh, um, the European Union, with the contribution of the European Union, because 80% of the overall budget was financed thanks to um, the Sustainable Blue Economy Call of 2017. Uh, we participated in this call and uh, we succeeded in, um, of course, in implementing this project um, with the partners from Tunisia and Spain. The uh, project lasted for 30 months 
and um, it uh, focuses uh, on uh, three advanced trainings. Uh, activities involved also one study visit and uh, 30 fellowships uh, and one online final event. Uh, just to give you um, an example, we organized a training on marine spatial planning in Trieste um, and we really focused on talent circulation, so the fellowships. Uh, we, were, we wanted to uh, encourage the mobility of uh, researchers uh, from the northern to the southern shore of the Mediterranean. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, we had to uh, organize some of the mobility online, but six researchers were uh, able to move to other countries anyway. Just to give you an overview, these are some uh, examples of uh, some uh, students that uh, some participants that participated in the mobility. They did a traineeship, for example, uh, Dua, she did a um, traineeship in Rome, uh, coming from Palestine. And then there was uh, Piero from Italy who did a traineeship in Greece. We have all uh, the stories of the participants on our website. And uh, finally, I would like just to spend a few words on Trieste. We are based in Trieste. Um, Trieste is a unique place for research. We know that uh, 30, um, we have a, a ratio of 30 out of 1,000 people, active people who are researchers and who work in science, which is a very high number considering that in Italy the average is only 2.5. And we work with all our partners uh, who are also based in Trieste, but also abroad, of course. And to conclude, I said before that this initiative was launched to, um, to find a solution to the mismatch between uh, the, the training off offer and the market needs. But also, uh, one last point is that we really want to increase the, um, dialogue between academia, uh, government, and the industry, which is now lacking. And this is also a crucial aspect to actually uh, solve the issue of the mismatch between the skills and jobs. Thank you for your attention. And if you want, uh, of course, to ask questions, I'm here, I'm available. You can also contact us. Many thanks, Flavia. We are running a bit late, but I think we can take two minutes now for, for some questions. Um, you have seen that some questions I've already um, introduced through Slido, but first of all, I would like uh, to give the chance to the participants here in the room. If anyone would like to raise a question, before we go, we ice break with Slido, and then we see someone is so, proud, I mean, so brave to, <laughs> to ask from the audience here. So uh, I think, Vincenzo, you are hearing me from, from the web stream. Could you show the, the slide on the screen or? Voila. Thank you. That was, yeah, it's working. Uh, so on the on the first question, I, I will give the floor to, to Gia, but I would like just to, 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 the same, to provide a caveat. The call for proposal has been developed with uh, uh, the Director General for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries uh, of the European Commission. So from the beginning, we discussed about how to, uh, let's say, um, integrate in the call the possibility of exploiting the, the green comp. Of course, it's not a compulsory uh, reference document, but it's more up to you to see how you can take inspiration and integrate it. I leave to be able to do the elaborate this. Okay. Um, so indeed, thanks for the question. Um, indeed, thanks for pointing this out. It's not a compulsory, let's say, framework or tool. Um, what I would suggest is uh, if you have any doubt, please feel free to contact me, but also a way to, let's say, integrate Green Comp um, in, the, in the call is to, uh, when you're planning to indeed conduct any educational training, to start thinking about how you can integrate those competencies into uh, the material that you're going to develop. Uh, that would be a way to do so. There are already uh, two Horizon 2020 projects, Green Sense and um, Education for for a carbon carbon free Europe. I, I forgot the name, but if you send me an email, I can put you in touch, and you can indeed uh, start collaborating with them already. Thanks. 
Thank you, Gia. A second question on, on the slide. Uh, yeah, of course we can. If uh, Flavia and, uh, and, and Gia agree, we, so I think that the, the easiest way is uh, to upload the, the presentation on the uh, CINE website. So it will be easier for all of you to, yeah, to download them. And there are also the contact, the, the links, so be useful. The question is for uh, um, for Flavia, please. Okay, so from yes, which are the main reasons for which students apply to Blue Economy Educational Program? Okay, so from my experience, the reason is that, uh, as I said before, there is a mismatch between um, the training offer and the market needs. So when the students finish their uh, um, their training path, so when they finish university. Uh, even if they are skilled, they, they see that in the blue economy, they don't find uh, a job, perhaps. But on, at the same time, there is unemployment in the blue economy sector. So, so the, the objective of doing a master is that um, it, it's a very short uh, um, and advanced training. Uh, which will give you some specific competencies and some multidisciplinary competencies that sometimes uh, uh, researchers have focused on only on one field, the luck. And uh, this multidisciplinary training is seen as a really um, a, a very a good, uh, uh, let's say, um, a good uh, uh, thing to add to your CV and which can really make also a difference uh, considering the, 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 all the topics that you learn. I think also the following one, maybe for you, Claudia. Okay, so are people already working on fisheries, applying to the masters and summer school? Yes, yes, we had people working on fisheries this year. For example, uh, there is a student from Tunisia who is a fish guard, and she uh, was a researcher and is a researcher on, on fisheries and specifically on, on clams. Um, and she has been doing the master because she would like to to change uh, actually uh, to change job to move to another sector. This is just an example, but we've had many. And actually, on our website, uh, there is a, a, a section which is dedicated to all the student profiles. So, so, if you're curious, you can just have a look and you can see all the profiles that we that we accept uh, uh, as students in our in our master. I think I think we can all agree with the. I mean, most of the question is a suggestion, a recommendation to yeah, uh, for, for implementing green comp should reach out uh, also to industry and policymakers, not only academic institutions. So should we we agree? I think that the PSC is also working on it. I mean, in a way, to present green comp here at the exposition of the Commando is also going this direction. Our idea was actually to, to reach out the industry. Speak thanks. Um, so indeed, by by all means, I mean the green comp is uh, free for use by everyone. And also, coming from us, the competencies of green comp have been integrated into the partnership for Israel Innovation Playbook. That is a uh, indeed it, it's for a pilot uh, that uh, sees seventy four territories in Europe uh, doing uh, partnership for Israel Innovation. It's about uh, innovation policies and strategies for sustainability at the regional, local, and national level. Emilia-Romagna, the region we are in, is part of, uh, part of the pilot. And uh, we suggest 68 tools uh, for developing an innovation strategy. And part of the tools here, you can see the competencies that are going to be developed by implementing such tools. We base... Um, the competencies on green comp and recomp and another framework that is uh, for policy makers. Thanks. And I think we can close this session. Uh, yeah, I think for the we can return. It's on 24th of November uh, in Brussels. And uh, yeah, we will, we will find uh, all the links again on uh, my slides when we will be available on the, on the website of CINEA. But I mean, by Google, uh, Googling uh, Blue Career uh, Call for Proposal Info Day, you will get immediately the uh, website page. So, Sylvia, so it's my turn. Sure, I think we have to, to call the, the author.
yeah. panelist. Yes, I so thank you very much and thank you very much for the first session. It was very insightful, a lot of uh, things to think about and how to make projects, but also funding. So very good that we do have this opportunity and I'm asking to come on the, on the floor and to exchange um, the panel uh, with Raffaella Gutti from Cluster Mare, Friuli Venezia Giulia. Welcome. And um, Lucy Saxton, uh, STC uh, group from the Teams project. And then Yavne La Benka in Euro Mediterranean University of the Center of Excellence on Sustainable Blue Economy. And Federica Bruni um, for the Network and Development Coordinator of the Business Smart UMC project. So, sorry. Yeah, the microphone is a little bit, um, yeah, we will have to share now. So, first of all, um, well, all three, all four uh, panelists are uh, managing or participating to projects. So it's very insightful for those that have to write down how things were, how things uh, uh, went, and how things uh, will be or are. So first of all, I'm starting with Raffaella. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Good morning. Um, Raffaella, can you tell us a little bit on this? How was in your project uh, um, the conditions that helped you to, to run the project? But what is remaining after as well? Because that's a very big frustration for me when I'm writing project or we are programming initiatives. That's you finish and then the, the project is finished or is not. Yes, it is finished. Um, first of all, let uh, me say that I'm very happy to be here and especially to be here with the women yeah. on the blue, yeah. <laughs> on the blue skills because uh, it is uh, so not so usual to have so many women for this topic for uh, blue economy, and I think that uh, in these years uh, is very important to involve the female part. Uh, uh, in the um, blue economy job. So I'm very happy for, for this. About the conditions, um, I think that fundamental condition is uh, the deep knowledge of the local entrepreneurial uh, um, reality. Uh, and uh, also the close connection with the universities, with the research centers, and um, uh, in our region, Friuli Venezia region, the same region uh, of uh, OGS, uh, we have um, big players of the sector operating at uh, international level. That is uh, uh, Fincantieri, for example, Varsila, and so on. And uh, mm, uh, the knowledge of their needs uh, help us uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, training paths uh, for um, professional profiles uh, uh, which uh, are required in the global, not just in the, in the local uh, labor market. And uh, also this close exchange of information between our cluster, we are a maritime uh, cluster, uh, and uh, the enterprises, the companies of um, our territory uh, permit us to recalibrate also the long-term strategy of our uh, project because um, the long-term strategy, which uh, was at the basis of, um, of the project proposal, uh, was old when uh, we uh, wanted to replicate the, the instruments, the paths that we um, uh, that we had in the project. So this exchange of information with the companies uh, in the year following the end of uh, of the project uh, prompted us to um, to organize different. Uh, that is one master of second level EQF um, 8, which is the second edition of the master organized uh, during the project on safety and security at sea for ship and uh, offshore plants. 
safe and security for uh, um, cheap plants, uh, but also for people and uh, environment. Uh, and the second path, uh, a master of the first level on uh, nautical and uh, naval uh, design. So other needs, uh, other, other paths uh, with uh, the same basis. And also uh, the same competencies uh, of uh, universities, uh, of uh, research centers and so on. And uh, it was very important. Another important condition was uh, the availability of companies uh, to uh, offer their people uh, their staff uh, as lecturers, uh, the presence, uh, the co-presence of lecturers uh, from companies, uh, from universities is, uh, I think, the, mm, um, uh, the added value for, uh, for our um, uh, initiatives. And uh, um, beyond, the, um, and, uh, and also the involvement of companies but not also not only um, big companies but also as a means uh, allowed to um, have uh, many students uh, who were hired from uh, from the companies uh, themselves so it, this is very important because uh, we can uh, match the offer and the demand in the labor market and um, in the in the last year, not two years ago, in twenty twenty one, the offer is uh, uh, another time changed because uh, uh, the analysis uh, of uh, uh, occupational needs of the companies uh, bring us mm -hmm. to uh, have uh, a lower profile for the professionals that is not a master but uh, um, an uh, high uh, ITS in, in Italy, <laughs> that is a, 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 five, a, five, <laughs> a five level. EQF, yes, yeah. exactly. Um, because uh, uh, companies uh, need that uh, or those uh, profiles. So we organize um, with, uh, with a foundation to, to pass in the blue, in the blue economy and in the same time uh, two summer schools um, uh, which uh, are the heritage of us as project the real heritage but uh, uh, we want to transform the master in uh, summer schools uh, for um, main region that is uh, the duration of master uh, that was uh, too demanding uh, because many students were um, were um, the workforce of our of our companies, so uh, the company um, the companies uh, need to have their people, and uh, too many hours in the master were very very uh, demanding. So uh, we we have these two summer summer schools, one on alternative fuels uh, and. Uh, um, hybrid propulsion, and uh, the other one uh, on tech digital technologies uh, for uh, uh, safe uh, ships. And these are the heritage of ASSES projects. So, well, thank you very much. It was a uh, very insightful, a lot of ideas for those that are in the room and lots of uh, ideas for those that are listening at home and lo lots of opportunities to participate if you are younger students, like I see somebody here in the room for summer school and courses and specialization. You talked a lot about companies and the role of the businesses and territories and how to link the linkage. So I'm looking for Lucy Saxon position and experience in, in their team's project. So after just giving a couple of uh, uh, elements on the project, I would like that you talk about the blueprint methodology and uh, what are the challenges and opportunity that uh, this project that was conceived for the North Sea um, can also be translated and transposed uh, in area C, area, other C basins area. Thank you. Yes, thank you for the start. Uh, first of all, I would like to reject 
project because I think it's very interesting what you and also uh, uh, talking about uh, introducing lecturers from uh, business to uh, to the educational institution. A former project we have done the Blue Careers uh, Harvard Lecture introduced uh, the Harvard le Lecture. I think it's very uh, effective to uh, to have people from uh, from the business teaching in schools. Uh, and we work with this already uh, for a few years, and that's really workable. That's not the Teams project; it's another one. Um, yes, for the team project, we um, we have uh, developed um, um, a blueprint. Um, but first of all, before we did that, we made a gap analysis between the curricula of Belgium, Ireland, and the Netherlands in relation to uh, the Finnish teaching methods, Tiamiaktimia, uh, and STCW. Um, and we also, also have used uh, the gap analysis of a former project called uh, School Navigator, also an EU funded project, uh, which is more um, uh, focused on the interact of the Flandre and uh, Netherlands uh, harbor sector. Um, this gap analysis and the original blueprints of the Finnish coaching method was used as a basis to develop the team blueprint for maritime education. And um, well, this Finnish method is completely open and free, uh, while the STCW is the opposite and has a lot of compulsory uh, items and is uh, more structured. Therefore, the team's uh, blueprint uh, had to find a way to, uh, in between the two. And this resulted in the team's blueprint. Um, in this blueprint, there are all kinds of tools like the learning contracts, design thinking, uh, legal play, et cetera. And these tools, they are used to train the lecturers uh, of the schools into coaches. Um, um, this, uh, with this practical experience, the coaches and the project partners, they de developed projects to, exper uh, to experiment this in real life cases uh, with the students. And this resulted in three different types of uh, projects on three different different levels in three different schools. For example, in Belgium, uh, they introduced a master level, um, uh, the coaching and experimental uh, learning instead of traditional uh, teaching. Uh, in Ireland, on the bachelor level, uh, they integrated the team blueprint into uh, the existing, uh, existing module. And in the Netherlands, on that level, we organized a project week, and there, uh, the coaches and students they worked together on the bank in the ICE project week. Um, just one more thing to say is that the uh, the results of this uh, blueprint and all the projects we have done is that uh, the coaches they say that uh, it's uh, the, the blueprint. Um, they gave better learning results and also an automatic way of learn, working for the students. And um, what also is very important is that the team blueprint can be uh, applied in vocational education. And finally, uh, the maritime business very much welcome this uh, uh, method. Thank you very much. It was really insightful. Uh, just a question, how many, uh, how, uh, how many young, uh, uh, new entrepreneurs have you uh, mobilized uh, in this project? And the students or the coaches? Both. Okay. That's well, good. Um, <laughs> we have now, uh, we have about 14 uh, graduated coaches mm -hmm. and about over 60 students have been trained by the coaches. So, okay. And that's that's divided in the three educational institutes. Right. So that's uh, coaches that will last forever as well. Yes, yes, and students yes. will uh, be uh, partners for future projects as well. Yes, definitely. good. Yeah. So that's uh, very interesting. Thank you very much. Then I pass the, the, to Yarmela Penka from the Euro, uh, Euro Mediterranean University. Um, they do have the, uh, uh, you have uh, some jam activities within the Jan Monet Center of Excellence uh, uh, related to competency. Uh, the competency framework. So my first uh, curiosity, and I hope that is the same, in um, 
what is actually uh, the type of activities that you are doing for this in practice and what is uh, do you think is needed for uh, future projects? Thank you for the question. Um, so uh, at the Euro Mediterranean University, we have a Jean Monnet Center of Excellence on Sustainable Blue Economy. And Jean Monnet Centers of Excellence are, uh, as a, an instrument of funding by the Erasmus Plus program, uh, meant to act as centers of competence um, and, and uh, focal points of knowledge and competence uh, for uh, subjects um, related to the EU. And since um, our center of excellence is, is focused on, on this uh, topic that we're discussing today, uh, one of the key elements, one of the key tasks we have um, set ourselves for uh, when applying for the project um, was to build this competence framework in the area of blue economy. And this uh, to us was really uh, at the intersection of research, education and uh, science policy dialogue and dialogue with stakeholders. At that time, um, this was responding to the appetites that um, I think were really uh, transpiring a lot of policy documents. Uh, and it's a great pleasure, and but also uh, to, it's a great pleasure to see that so much has developed since. I think we have heard a lot of what, um, uh, a lot of these needs being asset, uh, addressed, particularly with the Green Comp, uh, with this exciting uh, initiatives that are going on across Europe. But at that time, it really seemed that there's an appetite for skills um, in the area of blue economy. There was a lot of mention about the uh, skills mismatch, but the, all this uh, rhetoric was hardly supported by any evidence. So the intention was to review what kind of competencies are actually needed to build sustainable blue economy. And despite what we have heard, and this certainly will feed into our uh, uh, efforts, um, I think there is still a little bit of a, a gap, and this we really need to address very soon um, in bringing out and distilling the key competences that are targeting uh, uh, professionals working in the area of blue economy. And um, there have also been, I think this might not be brought so much into the discussion here, there have been efforts to uh, do very sectoral uh, mapping of skills needed, particularly for renewables, um, by the MAIDS project, I think it has been mentioned. Um, but what is missing is a little bit of a, an overview. So if we have this bottom-up activities, we also need to have a top-down overview of what skills are needed to lead the transition um, to sustainable blue economy. Because currently, I think we're somehow, um, Currently, we're looking at building blue economy, but we need to be thinking about setting the blue economy within the ecological transition. And because that what sets the current business as usual um, from sustainable blue economy is particularly the focus on sustainability and the skills. I think that's what presented um, in the framework of the Green Comp. So this is um, at the focus of, of our efforts so far. And um, I think the it, the perspective of competences um, has a big advantage of looking also at the potential jobs that perhaps are not being so much um, that are not operating now, but that might be potential jobs in the future. Um, because if we focus on competences, we uh, have more of a um, we build skills and we talk about knowledge and competences, um, and and that allows us for thinking about. Um, the jobs that are maybe going to exist in a few years rather than only those that are needed now. However, and I'll finish with that, um, we there is a, a strong need for thinking um, in the area of lifting these jobs. Uh, we shouldn't be, there is a strong need for managing and coordinating the jobs uh, rather than just uh, reinforcing sectoral thinking and uh, jobs that continue be looking at sectors in silos. Well, thank you very much about the silo that is actually not any more useful for a sustainable blue economy. So that's uh, very important. It's very also <laughs> interesting the engagement of local actors that you are you are thinking and how to collect information 
and so on. Do you think that um, it, it's a, there is a more need or there are methodologies that you can suggest how to engage and ensure that more uh, young students or uh, young professionals uh, that can move to the blue economy and how to attract them, uh, making sure that uh, apart from the territories like Trieste and so on that are very blue oriented in terms of economy, but others like, um, for example, more internal areas that might uh, attract people that likes to see another sea <laughs> and then before, uh, instead of just land as a perspective and professional perspective. I'm not exactly sure if I understood the question um, in the way it was meant, but um, I think part of the uh, part of the huge effort that we all need to do, um, and which is really moving the society um, towards uh, sustainability, sustainability and systems thinking, is also to overcome the the division between sea and land, and um, it certainly um, has come. I see that a lot of young people, if this is under discussion, are interested in the sea. And I don't, I think also that the audience we have here attests that, but um, I, I would, I don't think um, that there is any specific effort needed in convincing them that sea is important, other than promoting uh, this sustainability and holistic thinking. Thank you very much. Sometimes in Italy we think that we are we have a uh, country uh, all uh, around uh, all are surrounded by coast, but most of the time we think about the land and we forget about uh, we call it sea blindness sometimes. That, that's why I was. Uh, uh, it's a buzzword, but it hasn't popped up so much in this conversation uh, over the past hour. Uh, of course, uh, ocean literacy is very much part of what uh, I believe you, um, you are referring to. Um, and ocean literacy is uh, just opening our eyes to, to the inter interlinkages between land and sea. Uh, it's, op it's being aware of the huge importance of seas. It's, um, being, it's having some basic knowledge uh, about uh, how humans are also inextricably linked with the ocean um, and many more. And there's, of course, uh, a lot of substantive knowledge involved there. But um, ocean literacy, as I would say, one branch of green comp uh, and, and sustainability thinking uh, is definitely should be at the forefront of our efforts. In this. Thank you. Thank you very much to recall about these uh, keywords of the ocean literacy that has been um, not mentioned uh, openly yet. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm calling uh, on the floor um, Federica Bruni on the Network uh, Development Coordinator on Business Med UMCA. So just briefly uh, highlighting uh, the main uh, um, characteristic of this project, but also um, Thinking about the relationship between finance, uh, investments, therefore, and blue economy, and what has to be known. It's not just technical, as uh, as we have been more or less saying, but also financial. Can you just uh, tell us this, and how can suggest uh, what kind of things can be suggested to our participants? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for the question. Before, uh, perhaps a bit of uh, an explanation of. Who we are at Business Med. We are a, we're a confederation of employers uh, from uh, 24, uh, 24 confederation of employers across 18 states uh, from the Mediterranean. We are a regional organization based in Tunis. And uh, as, uh, as I mentioned, we are the private sector. So our, our aim uh, is to, to, to develop the Mediterranean, uh, the Mediterranean countries together uh, in, in, to have a sustainable socioeconomic development. And um, so this being said, of course, uh, we, we promote uh, new business models because we, of course, have noticed that uh, continuing in the path that, so, that we have uh, done so far has not been uh, successful, and especially if we wish to continue um, in, in terms of sustainability, um, it is essential that we promote this new business model. And especially when we look at our projects uh, we, that we, we currently handle, um, 
we have uh, we we do have sub granting and uh, sub contracting opportunities, and this is how uh, how the aspect the financial aspect is uh, is uh, focused. For example. Uh, we are currently uh, working on the InvestMed project, which is a project uh, financed by the ENI CPC uh, program, and uh, that focuses on the youth and women entrepreneur uh, uh, from uh, three uh, South Mediterranean countries. So it's Lebanon, Tunisia, and Egypt. And it has a special focus uh, on uh, cultural creative industries and the blue economy. So within uh, within this project, we we have so far awarded uh, we we have training opportunities for uh, for young entrepreneurs, as well as uh, as well as um, sub granting opportunities. Uh, just to give you a few numbers, uh, we have trained so far uh, seventy eight uh, entrepreneurs uh, within uh, the blue economy that receive certifications um, on sustainable business uh, business practices. Um, as well as within uh, within the sub granting, uh, we've just awarded. Uh, we had a, a, an event in Lebanon where we awarded 41, uh, 41 uh, sub grants, twenty four of which were uh, for uh, startups and entrepreneurs within the blue economy. So this is to give you an idea. And of course, we continue through training and incubating and and helping them uh, develop their project because, of course, as we know. Um, as well, the, I heard the gender component. These are also the blue economy also employs a lot of women, so this is also essential to to in this sense. So yes, a big focus on entrepreneurship. Another important project that we're currently handling on the blue that that touches sustainability is the Met for Waste project, which focuses on uh, waste management uh, in the Mediterranean. And this is especially linked to uh, to view to review the governance of the waste management uh, of the waste management, and within which we also have uh, subcontracting opportunities after a first assessment of the needs of spe specific uh, specific um, um, of specific. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, go, like uh, governing authorities, what they will need. So we're going to look at uh, at these, and then uh, move uh, move in the terms of finding the correct enterprises and uh, startups to uh, to achieve a sustainable waste management. Um, but this is not the only the only way we we promote sustainable uh, business practices, and especially also in the blue economy, we've uh, we've also do that by supporting a business support organization and enhancing their skills and capabilities. For our members, the green transition is very, very important, and especially with the Green Deal, um, we have a thematic committee focusing on this, and uh, where we also are looking at uh, at skills um, as well for women and youth, as I, as I mentioned, um, and. Um, and yes, we've we've recently had our flagship B two B event. Uh, in uh, in uh, Malta, where we also tackled uh, sustainability, and uh, specifically, we had a panel on uh, on uh, on skills for the the maritime transport and logistics sector. So this is to to give you give you an overview. And and this uh, this uh, flagship event was uh, sponsored also through a new project, uh, the Epsomet project, on the through Europe. So this is a bit of an overview of what uh, what we do. Uh, thank you very much. Big overview and a lot of uh, elements that are and keywords are very interesting. So let uh, let me say a couple of uh, things uh, also in practice. Uh, this is also a session where you can ask questions. So please use Slido or intervene after we close down this first round. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as well, I would like to um, ask uh, very quickly a keyword that you would like to leave. Uh, to our audience uh, in order to support uh, their creative path uh, to participate to participate to this uh, new European uh, call for proposal on uh, education and training. Yes. So please, first keyword. I don't know if I can give uh, tips for the application because uh, we would like to apply too. So no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a partnership then. <laughs> Keyword is partnership. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yes. 
one keyword is partnership uh, is the involvement of companies it is very interesting what uh, the colleague said was uh, what was said before that is a global vision of competencies needed for the transition yes it is uh, true that is not only the needs of our companies but also global a global vision and i think that the tools of green comp uh, will be very very useful and I note some competencies that uh, we can include in our in our application. That is uh, imaging alternative future. It is very very interesting and also adaptability. And uh, another suggestion uh, could be to to have also a long term strategy that can be. Uh, Ex uh, changed in the future, but you have uh, you have to to give a vision in your in your application. You have to um, to give an idea of what you have to want uh, um, to do in the in the future. The sustainability of your of your project, and if it is possible, is also important the involvement of public administration. In our case, uh, the involvement of public administration that uh, um, perceived the need to support our initiatives because uh, they saw the needs of the companies, of the, of the businesses of the territory, uh, help us both in co-financing our initiatives and in the promoting of the initiative. Okay, well, I asked for one keyword. I do uh -huh. have six at least. A partnership, company involvement, mm -hmm. imagine a new future, that adaptability, long long term thinking, and involvement of. Just too many. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot of information for those that have to write. So you, I think partnership is very important then for you if you want to join. So, um, Lucy, um, will you one or two keywords? Yes. Um, well, as we know that the skills gap between what the, the maritime business needs and what the educational institutes uh, provide um, and their the, the, the team's blueprint is one just one small solution which we tested in three different countries. Um, I think as as you did, SCCW is worldwide worldwide we should carry on with this team's blueprint and uh, implement it in, in other countries as well. So that's okay. my vision. In, uh, we, we should carry on. This is a nice project that we have to carry on so, in other countries. Great. The sustainability of the project in the carry on concept is <laughs> <That's correct. Yeah. laughs> just not finishing after funding, making sure that you create a project that is long term thinking as well. Again. So again, Janela, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to um, amend this list in, in ways that haven't been said. And I think um, my keyword would be disruption um, because a lot, what we really are looking at in, when we think about our uh, need, uh, about uh, the need for tra uh, ecological transition is that we have to start doing things differently. And I think in training and education, I don't think we have done that disruption gap. We keep talking about innovation in relation to industry, but not so much in skills building. So um, I think just continuing with business as usual also in training um, is sort of unlikely to, to bring us there. So think, think uh, ambition and think disruption and how that can be um, ingrained in, in capacity building. Um, I think that will carve out very interesting proposals. Oh, very challenging disruption and ambition as well. So that's uh, two very interesting skills. So last, uh, Federica. Yes, so I think um, my keywords have already been mentioned as a private sector representative. You know, um, it's really, it's really central that we are involved, and uh, and uh, not only as uh, as was mentioned within uh, these uh, these uh, these programs on uh, on uh, on skills development and DT, but also in the definition of the curricula, and on on uh, on the definition of future skills that are needed 
for uh, for uh, for the future. For example, just to, to perhaps conclude, uh, we have worked uh, with the UFM on the definition of their strategy on vocational pathways uh, for the V for the higher education and VAT sector, in which we highlight some of the recommendation, which has also been uh, been uh, mentioned by my colleagues here uh, today. So yes, private sector involvement uh, on all uh, on all fields. Private sector as well, we means that we research and university private sector, tribal ethics, basically, again. And uh, it's about uh, 20 years that we're working on this model and uh, it's, it pays, so we go for it and we keep on that. So um, I think now it's time for questions. I see in Slido that are already uh, shared. So some of them are uh, related to how are is needed or it's uh, um, how can I find the information? This I will give back the floor to Luca, but the first uh, and the last one, international career and international cooperation are needed. Um, let me say generally, we have, a, I think, a, a very standard answer. Yes, it's a value added, it's not necessary, by definition, but it's generally a value added for a better career, and that's probably why uh, we do have uh, the Blue Skills uh, call for proposal to ensure that there are possibility to, uh, and uh, good paths for uh, internationalized. Because I put my feet on the uh, on the shoes of the younger uh, students and uh, the trainers that are working every day and uh, don't have time to look for information. So. Our project needs to make sure that uh, people people can be reached and not by chance or just by, but also to find a way to uh, connect and to make sure to be visible as well, uh, not just by chance. But uh, we found out where to find so where to find information and give the floor to look as well and the others. Uh, yeah. Projects are available on uh, on internet. Uh, what are can do. Uh, if you provide all, everything to me and I'm talking to the panelists, we can always try to, to have everything published on the same page and in AI. It will be easier for uninterested people to find or to get all this information. Actually, the two projects funded by the American Fisher Fund are already there. Basically, it's CINEA, mm -hmm. the CINEA website is. Uh, the portal, the entrance. Um, if you have any suggestion where students, where project manager, uh, both uh, can find uh, can find useful information, just uh, tell us now. For GS, maybe they do have a new organization. I maybe wasn't explicit enough, and you know we're pushed to make promotion all the time. So um, our website is COE as Center of Excellence um, uh, minus S. Uh, UBE, SUBE, so uh, Sustainable Blue Economy, uh, .eu. And uh, there, at least, uh, there's information about uh, the Center of Excellence. Um, you can find our uh, the list of our uh, project on our website as well, which is uh, www.businessmed-umce.org. Uh, so you can find them there and the information about our projects and summer schools are on our website www.marefvg m a r e f v g altogether dot it okay finally uh, the project teams uh, all the information uh, and the blueprint you can download at the white paper it is all on project minus teams dot eu Okay, so these are the name of the projects uh, to see and to be inspired. Um, I was wondering, is there the portal, the place where to find it? If not, maybe that's a good point to put in the project. <laughs> because that's... Uh... Okay, so I think with this, I give the back the floor for the conclusion to Luca, if then nobody else has asked other th things or there are others. Is the image of jobs in the blue economy changing? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, if you 
I, I may say something because yeah, we, you can. I'm not sure it's changing, or at least not yet. <laughs> but we are working hardly on it. And uh, actually, yeah, the gender dimension is also emphasized in the in the um, blue career proposal just published but i i think it's worth to mention uh, another couple of proposals that we published uh, earlier this year on um, women in the blue economy it was very successful in terms of education uh, now it's under uh, evaluation so as soon as uh, the successful application identified uh, the project will start i think there will be also more opportunity uh, for uh, networking or and complementarity between those and the next generation of blue careers. The scope of the blue economy to a network and the stakeholders trying to address in particular the aspect of the test and also general and uh, but also changing a bit the how the kind of profession, career are, are seen. So I was wondering if anybody of the room have some questions or comments on this. Oh yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, you cannot be maybe, maybe it's better you come because otherwise at home they don't un, they don't yeah. hear you. you. Right. Okay. Oh you can use this one. <laughs> but no, but I don't want to <laughs> so you, yeah, you, you I was sitting down too much anyway. Uh I was just I uh, wanted to say that uh, indeed the focus on competencies rather than skills alone, especially in education, is really important. If we also think about future jobs, indeed, as Herneja. Um, okay. Um, uh, well, Gernesha. Uh, I mean, Gernesha. Um, was saying. Um, that indeed uh, it's uh, we need to think about the job the jobs of the future i mean the 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 world of work is changing a lot so instead of strictly speaking about skills uh, thinking about the knowledge uh, but also the attitudes i mean at the end of the day we need to think about what is that we can do differently in our daily job so we don't have to have a blue or a green job to act sustainably, you know? So with these competencies, the kind of mindset that we need to go for in, is indeed, what can we do differently and how we can contribute to build a blue economy, but also like a greener society. So I, I think that pan this panel really reinforced this idea and especially the idea of partnerships that indeed this call for proposal is not just about a one-off and nor should be, but it's really about also identify partners for collaboration across Europe that can really help take this path and this journey. So thanks. Thank you very much, Priya. So uh, the last uh, two questions are very relatively easy. Are skill needs different in different European countries? It's a easy, it's a sometimes yes, sometimes no. Mm -hmm. Uh, it goes back to the territory that was somebody, most of the panelists were, uh, were telling, but partnership, as uh, it was said, and competencies and so on, are mostly often uh, horizontal. So it's always a game of mixing the two. And how can small company benefit from this? A lot of you on the panel talk about companies. So who wish to give uh, maybe about invest? Well, um, what we do is that, of course, uh, we we publish our call, uh, I mean, on different level uh, within the various pr project that uh, that uh, we 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 manage at Business Med. Um, there's two full two two ways. Uh, of course, on social media, we publish uh, call uh, call uh, for uh, for submissions or for uh, of. Uh, application submissions for small companies 
uh, to benefit. So I, I invite you to follow us on uh, on social media. So if you look up uh, business med, you will find us. But as well, we we currently have a, a platform uh, um, which is called the Business Country Desk, uh, where you can uh, you can find our B two B events and. Uh, and matching events where we can also sometimes we focus on on uh, sustainability and blue skills depending on on uh, on the event itself so you can uh, you can uh, look it up it's called business country desk um and uh, the address is business country sorry bcd uh, bcdesk.eu <laughs> wow it's uh, it's great a lot of uh, input and um, we could stay here long, but the time is running, and uh, then it's time to go for the conclusions. Do you have any? Not really too much? Yeah, okay, so let's go to the conclusion. Luca, I give the back the floor to you. Okay. Many thanks, Silvia. Many thanks to all the panelists and, and our speakers. It was quite a rich uh, discussion, and uh, I also take a note on, on many elements. I, I don't think I can summarize uh, all, all your inputs, but uh, for sure uh, it doesn't match very much this aspect of uh, the competencies and not just skills. Uh, so to look into the, the competencies that are needed for the future, or also looking at the vision that is necessary in a way also to anticipate the changes to understand what will be the need to uh, uh, I will not uh, spend too much time on uh, business involvement. I think it's clear for everybody and also the aspect of partnering. Lucy was also, in a way, emphasizing the, the importance of uh, if you want to, to replicate. It's not just about uh, developing a, a blueprint for, for a certain territories, but also the possibility to, to bring this experience and, and, and the outside, you know, that counties are contest and territories. And uh, mm, perhaps just to, yeah, it was also interesting the, this this aspect of adaptability. That I mean, we are in a changing world. Uh, in a way, driving this uh, digital and, and, and green transition requires also a high capacity to adapt, test new approaches. Sometimes fail, but uh, test different uh, solution and avenue in order to find the right one. Uh, and in particular, being able to adapt jump from one one. one. So I would close here. Uh, thanks to all of you very much. I invite you for uh, the info day on the 24th of November. If you can join us, it will be really an opportunity to get much more information and also to team up making with other potential partner for, for applying. And many thanks also to, to the interpreters and to my colleagues, uh, Valeria here, Martha in the room that has helped us, but in particular, Vincent Gente from Rome. Uh, sorry, from Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> from Brussels, who has, uh, who has uh, um, managed the slide, but it was actually the mind behind all the structure of this uh, seminar in particular, also the panel. So, many thanks to all of you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank and you. Thanks to all thank you, everybody. Yeah.